Hey everyone, welcome to another installment on the WPLC24 build from Ampro Engineering. You may see some differences as to how we left off in the last video. It has been taken apart slightly and that is because we've created some new spring mounts for the shocks. These are what is going to be installed, which is going to raise these up slightly for a couple reasons. One, they sit too high in general. And secondly, it's too high for me. So we're gonna drop them down about 10 millimeters and then we'll replace the far too stiff Traxxas springs with some much softer ones that we have located. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the shocks. With the rear shocks that's assembled, we're going to install both of these. So there's a left and a right to these, just slots inside the frame rail. And the rear, it's gonna to have to wiggle its way inside this mount like that. For installation purposes, we're going to use an M2 screw, about 10 millimeters long, with a appropriately sized M2 nut. There's really only one size for an M2 nut. What I wanna do next is install the shock and I've taken off the original one that I put on initially, the one from the Traxxas Mini E Revo, I think it is. And uh, this spring, unfortunately, is unusable. It is, it is seriously, seriously stiff. So I was able to determine the spring force on this and locate a replacement spring by Century Spring Corporation. This is spring number 00-79, which has roughly one third the force that this spring has here. To me, it's still slightly, slightly too stiff, but it really is night and day versus this one here. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and install this. Still, it is going to use the M2.5 at the top of the spring. And this is far too long, but I do wanna mock this up and I think that'll be appropriate for now. And there we have it. So the rear shocks are installed and that is one heck of a difference. Uh, you are going to have to change the oil out of these shocks because although the springs feel great, the oil in here is far too thick for this application. Now let's move over to the front. For the front, we have the same style of mount as the rear, but these are in fact the same for both sides. And we are going to install this by slipping them underneath here and you have to pull these screws out because you're going to have to reuse those screw holes. So do this first. And once you've got these slotted in place, mark where this hole is on this panel, because we are going to have to drill a hole on this piece here to fit the screw head on the backside. I'm sure you could force it in here, but I'm not gonna do that. To mark the hole, I've got some of these tweezers and I'm gonna just put them in the hole and just kind of go back and forth and around just a little bit to make an indent on that with both sides marked remove the tray here and you should have some indentations i'm going to drill those out with a five millimeter bit to give ample clearance for these screw heads and then on my vehicle i'm going to unscrew these little extensions that i made so i've installed everything now it's important to note that you want to put these on with the screws and the nuts prior to putting this on for the obvious reason that the nut has to be held in place while you are threading it down now, it is also possible that you may put a little dab of super glue along the perimeter of the nut and it'll just stay in place. But uh, I just found it easier to install everything, put in the upper shocks, pop the top right in like that. When you put the top on, make sure that the top does slot into these little channels here. I designed it so that these original walls on this top piece will still go over the frame rail like the original. So you can see that they are slotting outside and properly seating. This makes this whole top piece significantly more rigid. So this will conclude the suspension for this truck, at least for the time being. Again, you know, I think the suspension maybe is a little bit stiff, but it is a million times softer than it was before. And until something better uh, comes out or I find something better, I think this is gonna be quite sufficient. Stay tuned for some more upgrades to this truck. As you can see, we still need to deal with the steering linkage and put the body on. Of course, the reason why the drive shafts are not attached is because we're getting the two-speed trans, so that's why we're leaving this one as is. Please stay tuned, everyone, and we'll see you next time. 